Hello. What can project management tell us about coronavirus in the UK? This is Mike Cashman. I'm drawing on ideas from Eddie Obeng, from Stephen Carver of Cranfield, and from the Department for International Development, from my overseas aid experience and consultancy to government and the private sector. The opinions are just mine. My blog is in the bottom right hand corner. We'll use Eddie Obeng's work to get some analysis and insight into the UK situation and see the problem. And then I have some recommendations. Eddie Obeng, who's a very skilled project management writer and practitioner, introduces us to four types of project. And I found this very useful. There is the type he calls paint by numbers, where we know what, how it is that we tackle a task. We know what it is we want to produce. It's very straightforward. But there's also the quest where we do know what it is we're trying to do, but we don't really know how we're going to get there on our quest for the Holy Grail. There's a very interesting type of project, which Eddie calls the movie. He originally called the home movie. And I like that because this is where you don't really know where it is you're going, but you know how it is that you get there. You know the technology. Um, you have your movie camera, your video camera. What you're going to produce at the end, who knows? And then there's the situation where we don't know our outcome. We don't know our method. We are lost in the fog. How does that feel? From paint by numbers, it's very straightforward. There is no problem. Everything's under control. We can tell you anything you need to know. From the quest, there is a focus on where it is that we're going. That's what matters. We may ignore things that are not relevant to that. For the home movie, project manager may be feeling quite cool about what he's doing, quite OK. Uh, may not be completely aware of the external environment, but fine with his or her own particular target. The fog, however, is not a happy place. There may be frustration, unhappiness, despair. There may well be blame. There is certainly confusion. And there's a wish to get out of that place. Uh, I made my living a lot of the time by helping people to get from fog into paint by numbers. What messages emerge from these different projects? From the paint by numbers, as I say, everything's under control. We know where we are. We can tell you where we're up to. Transparent, confident. Uh, that's, of course, where the UK public would like coronavirus to be um, and perhaps where government aspires to be. Uh, but we aren't there, as we shall see. Everything's under control in paint by numbers. In the quest, it is we must achieve our goal. That is what we're focused on, ignoring everything else. From the home movie, it may well be, does anybody want what we're producing? Is it what's needed? From the fog, there is urge to be out of the fog, to be in control, uh, to be away, to move away from that confusion. Now, how does this apply to the UK? Initially, we had a very straightforward set of slogans. Stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. The stay home part of that, you could argue, is a very known method. It was a very clear instruction to the UK public and people knew where they were. I've put the slogans overall into the quest box because there were other aspects of the method, such as PPE and testing, where there wasn't the same clarity about how we were going to achieve the goal. But the goal, uh, protect the NHS, was fairly clear. People did ask, well, what about care homes? I had a short answer for somebody um, as to why the care home deaths were not included. You keep track of what you care about. Uh, until public outrage demanded that the care home deaths be counted as well. Over in Matt Hancock's world, he was busy achieving, attempting to achieve 
uh, target set for no very clear purpose and where the outcome was not actually defined. In overseas aid terms, we would say that he had defined his output, the tests, or possibly the input of 40,000 tests into the letterboxes, but didn't know what it was for. And came up with this unusual statement that he needed to drive up demand. Do you remember the home movie project manager saying, does anybody want this? This was met with surprise in other quarters that there was no need to drive up demand. Uh, but it shows the mismatch between what Matt Hancock was targeting, which was, a, uh, if you like, a technology, a testing driven target, rather than something that would be useful for the overall program uh, to the greatest extent. Uh, and what happened? We moved from this stay home, protect the NHS, save lives into an area where everybody's reaction was you're seeking control. Remember, that's what happens in the fog. Uh, you're asking us to stay alert. What does stay alert mean? We don't know what that means. Control the virus. We don't know what it is you're trying to achieve. We've moved into the fog. And it's therefore not surprising if we just go into the fog that there is a lot of adverse reaction to that. So that's a rather unhappy situation. What do we do about it? I have three recommendations. Firstly, we need an overall integrated program. The way to tackle this is well understood, but not by government. Uh, we have objectives, yes, to save lives, yes, to ensure that the NHS can cope, and also to protect the economy, which can save lives downstream, uh, avoiding poverty. That's not unimportant. It needs greater rigor. It needs a programme leader who can apply that rigour. This cannot be Boris Johnson for reasons that we'll uncover in just a moment. We need to measure the outcomes objectively. The UK government has all the expertise for this in the Department for International Development. When I have sat with programme managers from DFID in Sierra Leone, looking at the Ebola recovery programme, they have insisted on objective rigorous targets. They would never have accepted the test is in the post. We insist on that rigour for UK government money spent overseas on things like Ebola. Why are we less rigorous for the UK? Why do we allow the government to mark its own homework in that case? Who could lead this? It needs to be somebody who's got a degree of rigour, experience, integrity and courage. That person is not setting the policy that's set by government, but with that policy set is working to coordinate efforts to ensure that the goals can overall be met. I can suggest Rory Stewart, David Miliband, though he's a bit busy, Justine Greening. Um, if you had to select somebody from the current cabinet, Michael Gove is probably the strongest implementer, but have somebody in charge of the whole thing. I hope you found that thought provoking. Please share. Uh, my blog is in the bottom right hand corner, viewdelta.blogspot.com. I have not written this video up as a blog article yet. I will do that. Please share the video. Perhaps we can make a difference and save some lives. Thank you.